Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Age of Wonders Planetfall, where we have a lot of murder to do, so let's just get right to it. I do not understand this move from them at all. Let's, uh, let's show them why this was not a good idea. Uh, so this is, this is a totally safe... We should be able to just auto-resolve this. The thing is, it kind of matters whether we take damage here. Like, it, it matters kind of a lot. Because we have to, this army has to be in good shape to fight the other enemies around here. So, you know, we'll go ahead and manual it and just try to, like, really minimize enemy impact. Because we do outperform the auto-resolver pretty significantly a pretty large percentage of the time. I do not have the greatest, uh, <laughs> the greatest, uh, units here. I had kind of forgotten. Well, let's start with, start with a great big rocket. Is this, this obstacle only has 15 health? Okay. And in fact, I'm going to shoot to here and destroy both of those pieces of cover. I don't want either of those being available. Uh, then we have our Bulwark guy. I guess we would like to have a turn. Oh no, this is Concussive Volley. This is not the uh, load better ammo into your weapon thing that I was remembering from that other unit. Okay, well now that you're out in the open, let's see, you have 27 health. We should be able to make this happen. Yeah, and then the bike. The bike has a real easy kill from there. Uh, we could... I suppose we could go forth and brand that guy and then get a free effigy out of him. Actually, can I? Do I have... I do have range. Yeah, maybe I do that. Maybe... Uh, right here? Right here I have range. Alright, the hero on the bike actually gets the kill. Is that... There we go. Oh, why the, <laughs> why the animations for everything in this game are so slow? Get you into some kind of cover. We did it! Probably, there's a good chance that all this guy's gonna do on his next turn is kill that, uh, kill that thing, which would work out pretty well for us. I'm not actually sure where I want to shelter you. So these guys don't have any area attacks. That guy does, but he's real far out still. So if he gets to right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, his attacks only have a five tower range. So this is a safe stopping place. Then we can figure out what else is going on with them next turn. But we do not need to be stingy. Interesting. Interesting decision. Uh, we do not need to be stingy with our operations. Alright, my rage is fueled. Uh, give me... 25% bonus damage. Okay, actually pretty cool. What a cool thing. Uh, just run up and melee you real hard. Like, what, I'm trying to figure out what the best move is. These guys are sort of in the open. So I want to try to make sure I'm taking advantage of that as much as possible. Actually, this is... A really great open. And then you only have to move this far. Might be able to just finish that dude off right now. Okay. Well, that makes this pretty straightforward. And then what do you do? Okay, I guess we do some Effigy Hysterics, may as well. And you just, like, fan out a little bit so we're not... We're not making the Chain Lightning attack from the other guy quite so powerful. I wonder if that always improves the closest unit? I'm trying to think. Was he... He was the closest unit last time. Okay, so that's the thing we can <laughs> be a little bit more careful about in the future. Now, this guy's tough. We're going to have a hard time uh, preventing him from doing anything. We definitely want to fan out a little bit. Is his, did his attack bounce two tiles or three? Okay. Two times. So, we're pretty safe if you move out to here. Sadly, you cannot move to anywhere where you have two action points left and still be far enough away. Well, then you may as well move as far forward as possible, and do we want to give him the Concussive Volley? Non-ethereal or non-mechanical unit. 
That is not gonna work here, right? This guy, yeah, this guy's totally mechanical. Well... I guess just shoot him in his face, then. Don't strain yourself, though. I wouldn't want you to hurt yourself trying to do a good job. Uh, I was planning on using the attack here. I suppose that we could uh, we could have branded him. It doesn't really make sense to brand him. So yeah, there's no uh, no sense in doing another thing here. We may as well combat stim to get action points or to get the uh, the aim all the way up here, and we'll definitely kill him next turn. Ooh, hey, that was pretty good. Well, now I have a whole different opinion of what we should do here. He's low enough that we can definitely kill him with an operation. So let's try to do it without spending the power. Oh, you're killing me. Well, I definitely don't want to just give him a turn. Honestly, the cost of the... Uh, the cost of the operations points is more significant than the, the cost of the power there. Okay, so now that we've done that, our militia power here is 710, and they do have turrets, right? I'm pretty sure. Here's a question. If I if I stand at Maker Machine Industries to prevent them from easily retaking that, they just go to Poventon, right? Actually, apparently I've spent so much movement I can't make it back to Poventon anyway. So I guess I do just stand here, and then they reclaim that, and then I have to fight them on it? I guess so. Alright, well, I don't, we don't really have a lot of options here. Uh, we could employ some of these things that we built up. This target-friendly colony is defended by a superheated plasma ray. Will that affect the... Outcropping as well. I mean, it, it probably doesn't make sense to do this because they'll just go to Poventon and take it back for free, right? But this, on the other hand, targeting the actual enemy stack, damages enemy units for 20% of their current health and turns the sector into a volcanic sector. Is that a, a good idea? We definitely don't want to use fumigation protocols here. That is not an appropriate fit for our situation. But a flash strike, just to weaken them a little bit. We just vulcanize the entire thing. That's pretty... That's pretty okay. And it actually affected all of the enemy armies in the sector, which is nice. So we could attack these guys. And maybe we should? Network links are not great units. The Electrocutioner is kind of cool. They have these Huntresses that have... Incapacitate Demons, which do matter against us. We do we do have some Mechanicals in this army. And we're actually, like, we're almost uniquely poorly suited to, <laughs> to fighting those guys. Yeah, we might have to, um... Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Just like clicking on things idly while I think. We might have to just let them take Poventon back. I don't, I don't know that we can do anything about it. But they're certainly not getting our Maker Machine Industries. And then next turn in Ortonville, we can start building units again. We can just form up a little bit more on this army. It's a shame you can't buy units with influence and determine where they go. It seems like they always appear at your capital. So it'd actually be a handy time to be able to, uh, to do that. Do we want to go... Oh, 795 power. I was going to say, do we want to go to peace with these guys now while we have a, uh, a lot of resources? The answer is probably yes, but apparently we're going to have to do it next turn. I spent just a tiny bit too much. We're friends. We're all friends here. Can we please get the non-aggression pact back? Okay, so he's going to attack us then. There's virtually no chance of that not being true. What about you? How would you feel about becoming an ally? Okay, it looks like we might be able to pull that off. Just keep complimenting her and in three turns try for the alliance. Be awfully neat to have somebody not at war with me. 
Okay, so wood drill is very nearly actually mine. I guess we're just headed down this way, right? Okay, hold on. He's got an army in place over here. Oh, hey, look at that. That's like a real unit. It takes them forever to build up to their higher tier units. Okay, so it's not exactly amazing, but he definitely intends to attack us with these, right? So probably what we should do is tack in that direction. I guess, man, yeah. All right, let's let's move like this. You guys are good where you are. And then the question is, like, do we want to move the army out of Woodrill? Is this the time to come forth? He doesn't have an army visible to us anywhere. I guess we can um, we can scan a little bit here, right? Yeah, he does not have an army anywhere nearby. We are probably safe to leave Woodrill now. I'll be very annoyed if we lose it. He has an army show up out of the darkness somewhere. I guess I'm going to stay put for one more turn. And then the question of, like, do we reprime the Pyrex Flash Strike? I think we don't. Because first of all, it'll step on the timing of the um, this finishing a little bit. And secondly, I want the energy for other stuff. And these guys are totally, yeah, totally just going to go to actual Poventon, where we do not get our garrison, because it hasn't been ours for long enough. Uh, and that is apparently enough sectors. We sheared one off, but it wasn't good enough. So we're going to have to defeat them at Poventon, and we're going to have to do it soon. They're going to win the game before we will, uh, before we will win the game at this rate. Well, the good news about having a ton of energy is that we could delay our victory a little bit and instead just buy units at Ortonville. Or to put, quickly put together a force that can do this thing. And we're going to need a functional army at Ortonville anyway, because we have to... Um, we have to be able to defend the tower here once it gets built. They just assumed that I would want to decline uh, Rotocos Rex's proposal. And then he made another one, and I declined that one as well. And then he sent me a message, which I assume is pretty negative. Yep. If you lay down your arms, we'll refrain from wiping your puny faction off the map. Request an attack from my, uh, from my allies. I don't think that's necessary. You know what I would like, actually? Let's compliment you again. And then with this guy, we can request an attack from our ally. I think that's an okay... <laughs> Let me get back to you on that. You do not have a lot of time to get back to me on that. It's got to happen pretty quickly. How many turns until this would be, like, properly mine? Uh, it doesn't even say anymore. Yeah, I don't... I think we made the right move by not attacking, but it's bad for sure. Alright, uh, let's... Have you not move, I guess? Alright, do we want to take this? We should probably move on it, not, not because I really want to own this, but because we need to um, we need to be killing his units as we move south. The fewer units he has in position to reclaim things, the more secure our holdings are. So... You move there and you move there. Sort of surrendering the element of surprise here, I'm afraid. Uh, and then... I think we can safely at this point move out, because they would have to take it away from us before the beginning of our next turn in order to prevent that from becoming mine, and I don't think they can do it. Then over here in Ortonville, unfortunately, we can't make the good units. So... I mean, an assault bike totally works for us, right? 
we can do some stuff with an assault bike on account of it having um yeah on account of it having laser weapons and everything it does play into our mechanics so 20 percent damage bonus and also stagger uh the burning is less important than the choking i think choking's really powerful and then big bonus damage against immolated things. We can get like swarms of bikes that work well together. Kind of like that as a design. <laughs> yes, the Light Whacker assault bike. <laughs> That's actually extremely good. Uh, no, of course don't modify it. It's perfect. Reduce me. A Light Whacker. 482 energy to rush one. Do we need to? I really do want to get out of being at war with these guys. I just don't want to have to worry about this anymore. I would like to accept peace deal. Oh, I spent too much influence now. And next turn, we're going to want to have just a huge amount of, in of uh, influence. I guess we don't need to worry about this in the next turn or two, probably. So that being the case, do we, in fact, buy out that bike? I think we do. Do the second one. Give me this one right now. Okay, and we just need to figure out how we're going to take Poventon back. One thing I suppose we could do is we could swap out one of her things. We could unequip the uh, the piece of gear that is giving that one army to the west stealth and equip it on her instead. We do that, we can maybe get the, the troops from Poventon to make a bad decision. Okay, it was you who had that. Wait, was it? No, those guys are listed as being universally camouflaged, but you don't have the universal camouflager. Who the hell does? Well, you just, like, don't have any gear at all. We should probably fix this. Um, I believe you on the cat, but you should, yeah, you should have some other stuff. Like, maybe a hard light module, honestly? Yeah, I kind of like that. And then also, thermal targeting relay. Yeah, we have laser weapons in your stack. And a bio launcher. You can never have enough rocket launchers. Well, where the hell is that thing? Is that on a dead hero? Do we have a dead hero? No, we do not. Is it on this hero? No. Huh. Did I just miss it? It makes sense for it to be on her, because she has the units that appear to be stealthed, but she definitely is not... And if she doesn't have it, where would it be, right? Because we have... We only have so many heroes. I don't know. I guess let's not worry about it. Seems like a kind of a powerful piece of equipment to just go missing, though. Is it on you? No, you have this stuff. Did I dream it? Maybe, oh, you know what? That hero died. It was probably left as loot on the ground. We probably don't have it anymore. That, yeah, that's almost certainly what happened. I don't know why those units are still considered to be universally camouflaged. Maybe... No, I have no idea. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter, I guess. So I think you just stay put, then. Or, I guess what we could do is run back toward Poventon, or run back toward Ortonville, for the purpose of making them feel like it's safe to come over to Maker Machine Industries. And weaken their hold on Poventon, and then that's how we get it back. Actually, I like that plan quite a bit. So let's do that. Let's, um... We don't want to fall back so far... We don't want to fall back so far that we can't reach Poventon, but we also have to be a little bit careful 
about whether or not this stack could actually beat those nine units, what with their mechanical trickery and everything, and I did just add a mechanical unit to the army. I guess we'll go here, and we'll see what happens. I'm adjacent to the uh, to the garrison there, at least. Uh, you could produce units to run over there, but you also could just generate energy. I think let's just do a generate energy. And then we could prime an op, but this, this next turn is when we want to start priming the Doomsday thing, so I think we're just good for now. Yeah, I think so. Hopefully he doesn't have a bunch of units that are going to run in here and defend for him. I guess we could check that. Right, I still have ops points left. We could, uh, we could prep ourselves another monitor. Operational coverage is blocked. Really? That's weird. I guess they have a... Uh... Oh, sure, they have a personal data privatization module here. I'm not allowed to have their data. That's interesting. All right, well, am I going to prep one more of those? No, I'm not. I'm going to try to leave myself some energy next turn after the uh, beginning to prime the thing to do operations with. So I guess we're good. Nine turns. So we're probably still looking at about 14-ish turns for me. Something's got to be done about Groxa. We have asked our only friend in the universe to come and try to help, so hopefully she will be able to do something. Let's see if he wants to uh, get greedy here. Please, please get greedy. Because like, if he wants to move the six, six stack over to here to reclaim this, then we just go to Palvinton and reclaim that, and he ends up netting a loss of sectors. If he moves the three stack over here, then we run down here and kill the three stack, and then we have less to deal with on this. Nope, he didn't do anything at all. He is not greedy enough to put himself in danger. Ah, but somebody else dealt with him. Corvin's, Corvin's got his number somewhere else. I'm hoping that uh, when we get our victory condition started we don't see the enemies all just like tunnel vision on me not because i couldn't handle it but because i'm afraid that it might cause uh it might cause the assembly player to win the game it seems like every time he leaves the final stage he comes back into it at zero progress though it's like the whole 10 turn timer has restarted so hopefully it won't be an issue an update from ava People are messing with my Spacers faction, which is annoying. I mean, we have control of that dwelling. It's not like they can, uh, not like they could be spawning a bunch of units at us or anything. All right, we have our refinery. We also have a scanning station, which is pretty whatever. We got those laser upgrades that we were looking for. You know, the kind that don't refract. Don't you hate it when your lasers refract? Ooh, laser weapons have a strong chance to blind. Plus 30% damage. Laser ablation is not as exciting. It's like that's a that's a good tactical operation, but five tact points is an awful lot. And then up here at the top, plasma weaponry. A two strength chance to disintegrate tier one and tier two units. Disintegrated units are instantly killed and leave no corpse behind, which actually is the thing that matters in this game. That's pretty cool. The Starlight Projector bathes the battlefield in thermal energy, reducing defenses of enemy units. Also, a Strength Age chance to become blinded for all enemy units. That's pretty cool. I think we might go to Crystalline Technology because the Flash module is amazing. Even though we may not necessarily have a lot of time to make use of them. Corvin has sent me a message. It's a threat. Oh, no. My friend. You're feeling friendly, are you? Well, you know, friends don't try to murder each other. Okay. Well, he called my bluff on that one. I thought for, <laughs> I thought for sure he was going to tell me to go screw myself. Uh, what's up with this? 
Three turns till I reach the target. Awesome. Actually really great. So you are, I guess, just staying put. Hey, there were two turns until we finished producing this thing last turn. What's up with that? Why did I? Why am I not producing this any faster? I guess we could uh, we could swap the thing to an industry focus. Nope, that doesn't even fix it. Well, not much to be done about that. That's the wrong button. Uh, we know we need to do this, and we need to do it now. So let's just go ahead and commit those resources. And then... I guess we're just playing defense over here? Like, I I'm going to stay put, and if they move people out of Poventon, we can, we can do the thing. So you're good. They got an extra one of these guys because they have they have an infinite number of those dudes, but I don't think it's a big problem. Woodrill is stabilized. Rondefell is a turn from stabilization. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this is a big deal. Let's just go ahead and knock them out. Can you guys get anywhere nearby? No, you cannot. Well, I don't think we should need them. I guess I don't have a tremendous amount of energy here, so we have to be pretty cautious about our operations. And thus, also, these armies are not as strong as I would like them to be. Maybe we have to wait. For for maximum safety, maybe we have to wait. Then again, with Rondefell being actually mine, I don't think that that army is capable of reclaiming areas. I get Rondefell doesn't... Um, doesn't necessarily have great defenses, I guess, and we can't even look at them yet, so we don't know for sure. Now, what about Woodrill? Woodrill has turrets and stuff. It does not have the best infrastructure, but that's that's okay. That's not a big deal. Probably that's true of Rondefell as well, so maybe we can just ignore these guys is my point. Start heading down here for the capital. I guess I'll just move to here. This gives me the option of doing either thing next turn. Alright, you have all of your good stuff already. I guess let's build some engineering guilds. I'm only allowed to build one military engineering guild. Um, but yeah, definitely build that so that if we build units here to play defense, they're a little bit stronger. We continue to generate things here. I forgot Quentin exists. I don't think it matters terribly what we do here. In fact, just generate energy. Yeah. Okay, so as long as Corvin can keep this dude off of the win, in two turns we could potentially make peace with the Paragon if that seems necessary. continue generating energy really aggressively in a lot of places. Yeah. I guess we should end the turn while looking over here. This is the most relevant place to be for the first enemy's turn. And his turn takes forever, presumably because he has a huge number of military units spread over a whole lot of territory. So we need him not to re-enter the final stage for a couple of turns. I'm doing everything in my power to keep him at least having to play honest for Poventon. If he screws up here, we can probably drop him out of the final stage even if he gets it back elsewhere. It, it seems to me like he's going to have a hard time winning while at war with all of the people in the world. I will say that I'm glad I was as aggressive in grabbing land off of... Uh, off of Robin Booker as I was, and not, not just like letting a lot of this stuff fall because it's really important to be able to keep stuff away from him. Uh, yep, the String Theory Resonance Center is... Okay, hold on. We'll, we'll worry about that stuff on our turn. Reputation changed to neutral. They would like it if I would build them a thing. I will do that. I will build you that thing. Is she just going to tell me, interesting, still three turns away, time functions a little bit differently in their empire. 
Uh, that's not correct. This is not disconnected. Neither of these are disconnected. They're part of... I th Actually, this one's not even mine. It's a little awkward <laughs> because of the fact that the inner color for both of us is green. Could be a little bit easier to read. Rondafell was... Oh, I see. Rondafell was captured by Roto, despite the fact that he definitely did not have units anywhere near it. I'm wondering... I think there's a, a pretty good chance that the AI does some uh, some cheating. Like, whenever you don't have vision, units just kind of, like, move however they have to move. So we've seen that happen a bunch of times now, where they're, like, there is no reason to think an army was in a place, and then all of a sudden, just like, oh, here we are. And on the last turn, like, when, when they absolutely had to be over here and we had no indication that there was an army there, all of a sudden there's an army there. There's a thing that happens sometimes in strategy games. They, um... They give the AI powers that a, a player can't have because otherwise the AI can't be challenging. And even with those powers, this AI is still not challenging, so I guess I can't really be, like, too upset about it. Uh, so... Whatever. We solidified a place over here. I guess we're just gonna hit this one now. No reason to do anything else. Mostly what we are doing is waiting. He's probably not going to do anything here. My guess, my guess is he just sits here for the rest of the game. He never retakes Maker Machine Industries, probably. I mean, this is going to this is gonna fall apart for us in a minute. When we have to move this army to defend Plowman's Rose because somebody comes through the teleporter, uh, this whole thing is going to kind of go to hell. We could make a defensive pact with the with the Dvar this turn, I think, maybe? I, I think this is the this coming turn is the turn we can ask them. Maybe we could nudge their uh, their opinion toward allying with us rather than declaring war on us. Ava's breaking the defensive pact, which is the thing that does not make sense as an action. Wait, where am I? Oh, the Elysium Parks. Okay. I don't really want to use our power here because I would like to, to buy off the Paragons, but I mean, if it'll let us win the battle, we absolutely do it. So... They have a Transcendent, the two Transcendents, three of these assholes. But we are, we are a pretty low-tech force. We are not vulnerable to their mind control shenanigans. So how do we want to fight this? We could try to move the entire army, like, sweep down this way and try to engage with these two before we engage with the rest of them. I think I like that as a play. Not all of us are super fast, but... Don't really want to get involved in fighting for the hill. I would like to, like, just sweep around and keep the fight down here on the flatland as much as possible. But I guess you'll move to here. His slowness doesn't matter so much because he can he can fight from quite a distance. And you get out to here and enter. Yep, zero surprise there. Can they do transfer pain on robots? I'm not actually sure. No, they cannot. Okay. So they want to do this thing up here. I don't, but we maybe don't have a choice. I just don't, I don't think we're fast enough to get around to where we wanted to be. Shooting at that guy first is not going to help us. I think we just keep running. It just it doesn't it doesn't help us to engage first because of the way defense mode works and everything. We want to get them to engage first while we are uh, while we are close enough to retaliate strongly. If I put the pteranodon right here, definitely opening myself up to. 
two rounds of fire from this guy, and then three rounds of fire from that guy, maybe? Well, probably not. This only has a... F oh, no, it does have a seven tile range. It might be two and two. It's a lot of damage, but it won't be lethal. And it gives me the positioning I need. You may just go after the flyer instead, which would be fine. What do we want to do here? Photonic countermeasures is an area blind. Does this kind of stuff even work on those guys? Okay, it does. So we could try to apply this. It's three points. It's like a little bit of energy. We could do it on this guy right now because it does it does damage and blinds and just like make him really weak. But that what that will probably do is make him run away more than anything else. I think I'm gonna do that. Let's put him in an awkward position, cover him in flames, and then also stagger him. Okay. All buffing each other. We got him to cast his heal. They still have a heal left. But given that this guy is no longer in defense mode and everything, we might be able to just kill him before it becomes an issue. Of course, the T-Rex cannot get two shots off on him. Uh, if I move to here, I can. That puts me in the middle of everybody's damage output, though. Pretty easy to kill this thing. Ooh, we could just go for this and try to get lucky. We don't have a lot of buffs to distribute. We do have a sleep available. I probably don't want to bother scanning. I mean, he's still pain transferring, isn't he? Yeah. So that, that's that got to color my decision making a little bit. This is suicide. This kills the Pteranodon, right? Just put him way out in the open in, in a place where everybody can shoot him. Maybe it's okay, but if I want to do something, it definitely has to be an intentional thing. Okay, let's do this. We'll manipulate shield on you. And then I'm going to take a shot at this dude and see if we can't, uh, can't make this happen this turn. Pretty good start. Maybe with the manipulate shield up, he's strong enough? What we can do instead is just go for the sleep. So if I get to if I get to here, which is pretty safe, then I have my sleep. Actually, I'd want to go up here, right? Because if we if we group up with the Tyrannosaur, then we're we're just inviting more chain lightnings. Like run you to here, sleep that guy. Okay, awesome. And then I think we do just go for this. I have a spot here where I can get two big shots off. And they both crit, which is fantastic. Roll it, rolling crit at that moment was really, really nice. Uh, you move to... Do you even move? Like Maybe you're in a good enough spot. We just kill this thing now. You can only do that once per battle, right? Yeah. This thing's attack is only five tiles. We don't have to fight him. We could just back up. Yeah, there's, there's not really a compelling reason for me to do any, any damage to him at all. Uh, we could kill... We should kill this one. This one will be able to fight us. So you move up to here. Put one good shot into him. Apparently we're just only going to crit. I mean, we do have a lot of morale. Very high morale force. Uh, we could pretty easily kill that guy off. Just like the question is, should I be trying to do something else? If I move forward far enough to put a little bit of fire on the other transcendent, can I get him to spend his heal early? Because that would be a pretty useful thing, right? I think looking at this, I'm wondering about um, photonic countermeasures right here. Try to blind these two and also get some damage on at the same time. Really compel him to spend that heal. 
before it's potentially going to be a problem for us. I guess he's going to get to shoot no matter what, because I put my unit in harm's way, but we have good cover and we're at the edge of his range, so I guess that's not a problem. I'm just trying to make sure I don't give him another thing to shoot at. This has really short range, right? Yeah. Well, um... We'll worry about that later. If I do move to here, I'm creating a link between this unit and that unit, so the chain lightnings will... will bounce to everybody. I guess that's a thing I have to think about. Right now, we're not terribly vulnerable to that noise. Yeah, I'll just go to here and... pop that guy. Try to avoid making things any worse for us on the chain lightning front. And you... If you move to here or here, you're not giving them any extra fire, but you're also not in a position to deal any damage. Well, I think I'd do it, though. I think he just needs to be in a different position, ready to hit enemies. Like, he, he doesn't have a lot of other plays. Uh, face this way, be in defense mode. And let's go ahead and drop that up that blind operation. Seventy-nine percent chance to hit fails, which is a big disappointment for us. Hoping here that I've done enough damage to compel the uh, that guy to heal himself, but probably I haven't. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, no. That's fine. Like, if he if he doesn't heal himself, we can just go for the kill instead. So that cover is not easy to deal with. We drop this right here. I mean, I would love to do it right there. Hold on a second. Um, these things can't move, right? Oh no, they have. They totally have movement. Yeah, the one the one that was over here moved. I don't know why I was thinking they were stationary. Okay, so we do have to destroy them, and that being the case, we have a lot of a lot of good AOE options here. Uh, but what I'd really like to do is destroy this piece of cover. So I guess the way we want to drop this is like that. So now that guy is extremely exposed. Should be able to get a kill here. What is the best way to do it? We're going to run into problems with the chain lightning now, pretty much no matter how we do this, because we're just we're moving up. And you can take your step forward. Yeah, there's not really a fancy way to go about this. Just step forward and lay it on. I love you, Tyranodon. What, a, what an extremely powerful unit. Okay, so we managed to get through the Transcendence remarkably quickly. Feeling very good about that. Now we have to try to deal with all these big flying heads. And also, I mean, the, the engulfer's not dead. And I can't remember. It's going to wake up at the beginning of its turn, I think. So I guess we got to start working on it now. Still maintaining good distance for the, um, uh, for the chain lightning as best we can. There are going to be limitations, obviously, to our ability to avoid the Chain Lightning while continuing to be in fighting range. Oh, that's a real shame. Do I want to spend this unit's action finishing that off? Or should we spend an operation doing that? If we go for, like, a Firestorm projectile over here... We can't actually kill either of them with it, but I can cause a fire that will be a problem for them. Uh, going for a blind doesn't really make sense. If I shoot him with this, it still drops the fire on the ground, but it also it looks like it's... Oh no, it's still not targeting him. Maybe I can't drop that on the air unit? I think I'm just going to shoot the air unit with our, with our archer. I don't think I have a choice. Okay. Good crash down damage, which allows me to do a Firestorm projectile here that does kill that guy and then surrounds this guy with fire, so he's probably in a lot of trouble. And... I think things are going pretty well so far. We still have a heal left over on our, um... 
We, we have not used the heal on our Geomancer yet. Geomancer? Biomancer? I don't remember what that unit's called, but you know what I'm talking about. Oh good, they have nanite injectors too, man. Okay. So five damage on him. He's dead next turn because he didn't move out of the burning ground. He will get to act first, but he, he's dead. Uh, I guess we, like, we have to start working on these guys, right? We have to kill the turrets and stuff too. We have a lot of stuff we have to do. Okay, now I have no line of sight on absolutely everybody. So you gotta move to here. And then... Biocannon, of course, just barely unable to get the job done on everyone. So the Tyrannosaurus can kill one of these guys straight up. And it looks like he's maybe the only unit of ours that can do that. Although we could we could use three units to kill two of them. And they're just not a very high priority. Could we drop this thing? It looks like they've spaced out pretty well. Okay, oh, hold on. If we dropped it here, that would be pretty cool. How close do I have to get for that? It has a four tile range, so uh, one, two, three, five. I can do that. If I just roll up to right here, it only has a 50% chance of hitting each of them, which is not great, but... Okay, that was pretty good damage. We managed to delete that guy's turn. So that's, that's some fire we don't have to endure. And then... I think we have to just start working on this guy. It sucks that he has so much health and is so hard to kill, but we have three of them to get through, so this is not a, not a thing we can hold off on. That said, the units who deal multiple packets of smaller damage probably have to work on these guys instead. I'm going to use this turn to heal him. Because he's pretty important to the overall thing. Okay, excellent crits. The units that can't really do other stuff can just burn these guys down. Or the units that are guaranteed to be able to get kills. You know, that's also good. And then... Maybe take up... Unfortunately, I cannot take up less explosive cover, but at least I'm actually covered from all potential attackers in this location. We could go for a blind and... Oh, no, we can't. No, we can't. Those guys don't even use eyes. That was actually pretty good damage. And then uh, he has too much shielding to be killed by the laser strike. Yeah, like way too much. So is there anything else we want to do here? We don't want to use all of our energy. We'd like to have some energy for the future. Let's just pass the turn. We're going to lose the flyer this turn. They've definitely got some good chain lightnings now. We've, we've done a good job of spacing some of our units, but like this guy allows a jump to that guy. and It's bad. Yeah, we're going to take a lot of damage here. Okay, they are focusing really hard on the Pteranodon, which I get, but is actually working pretty well for us as a strategy. Got some good hallucinations off there. So he got stunned. I think we still have this guy, though. Wow, the biocannon's doing none damage. Just absolutely none. Well, I guess we have to do it, but I'm not happy about it. Let's space you out one more tile, since we can do that without losing anything. Guys are just really hard to kill. Damn it. Well, y you know what? That's on me. I should have scanned. Because we're going to have to get through two more of them anyway. So we can move you up to here and try to finish that guy off, and then we just spend an operation on this dude. Not totally ideal, but I have stuff to do. Like, we can't. We can't be spending that many actions, and if I'd done my, if I'd sequenced better, we wouldn't have had to do that. Oh right, they have this thing happen. Or 
We're losing our sentinel here. Oh, nope, he didn't go for it. Definitely wrong. Like, objectively bad play. You love to see it. <laughs> you desperately, desperately need to see it. Okay, uh, so... That doesn't really help. We probably just uh, open up the bio cannon on that guy. I'm trying to figure out, like, what is the best way to finish these dudes off? The Pteranodon can't even melee that one to death. Too damn tough. How do you get a graze? There, there maybe should be some limits on the, <laughs> the ability of things like that to occur. I was hoping we would see a lucky crit there. Instead, we got two grazes. Okay. Managed to get through. Probably didn't deserve to get through, but we managed to get through. Yeah, we just have to do huge, huge amounts of damage to these guys to kill them, unfortunately. Am I at the edge of that guy's range? I am not. Backing up will not help. If anything, I should move forward, because I'm currently providing a chain lightning jump to the, uh... Oh, that's pretty nice. Uh, now that we know he's just gonna come back to life, uh, I probably don't bother spending a thing on him. Right, we're just gonna have to kill him at the beginning of next turn anyway. Okay. We're doing alright, though. Let's see, we should have you pretty easily. For the moment. And then he's going to come back to life in a way we can't do anything about. There's no counterplay there, unfortunately. Uh, this is not very good. This is definitely better. Well... If one of those grazes had been a hit, we could kill him right now with a laser strike. Do I just strike him anyway? Probably not, right? I hate the fact that the like when you mouse over this guy like this, it feels comfortable popping up the tooltip in a way that has the UI occluding it instead of just moving it up some so that you can see the whole thing. You could very easily think that you are seeing all the stuff when you actually are not, which is just what a decision. Why would you design it that way? So he's going to pop back up with a little bit of health. I'm not 100% sure we are going to win this. I think we have to go Photonic Countermeasures because we need the blinds. Okay, they both landed. Getting some good use out of our new toy immediately. Boy, they just never miss, huh? That must be nice. Okay, he lives. We get rid of you. And you just do whatever you have to do to get a shot on that guy. Okay. Then we spend our last operation points making this guy who should definitely be dead actually dead. And then uh, this guy's still blinded for one more turn. Not that it helped much last time. Okay, now we, now we just have to get through a tremendous amount of this guy's health without, uh, without losing everybody, which we should be able to do because he just really doesn't have... Um, he doesn't have enough ways to deal damage to multiple targets. I think. I sure hope. I mean, I guess if he kills... Yeah, if he had killed the, um, the Bombard on there, actually, he might well have won. So that costs us a bunch of energy, but it does prevent us from having to come over here and recap a thing, so probably worth the cost? Probably. All right, uh, we have plenty of time to do another turn here, I think. Uh, let's negotiate 
can't offer a defensive pact for three more turns. Just completely insane for her to uh, to break our pact. Not a sensible move from her perspective at all. I think we just continue to build units here. Like, we don't do anything. And actually, uh, next turn we still will have enough to make this happen. Uh, we probably want to take care of this thing, right? So this army that he that he used to take this, the, ar the army that he spawned next to this base, I think doesn't... Yeah, we have 710. This, this doesn't have the strength to take anything away from us. So I don't think we have to stress too much about that. Let's uh, potentially hilariously overcommit to this particular battle. Just to make sure it goes down the way it needs to go down. It says safe battle. I'm a little worried about our units dying, but... We do have a massive advantage here. I'm going to hit auto. Save ourselves some time. Okay. It correctly did not get any of my guys killed. I really appreciate that. Can't select. There we go. Alright. Uh, yeah, absorb it. Sure. Obviously, we're not actually going to absorb it. But um, we can make them have to at least think about it. And then, where are we at with the spacers right now? Our thing got set back to neutral with them. We can't even buy stuff. So we just have to actually complete this production, I think. Nine turns, huh? I'd really love it if we didn't lose them as allies. So let's um, let's maybe boot a little bit of energy to gain a little bit of a uh, little bit of an alliance with them. That doesn't even take a turn off of it, apparently. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna generate very little energy this turn. You working on it is not going to take it down to one turn. We can we can leave it like that. So I think we're going to tell all the rest of our... Is she still doing this? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're just... Leaving everybody else on energy production, probably. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, so your orders are stay put. Yep. All right, we're getting close, and uh, the assembly player is still not back in the final stage. So we are like right on the edge of uh, of getting this done. Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to uh, compliment the other two players that we're still trying to make friendly. Sort of a uh, ridiculous quest, though. Like you, you can put an awful lot of resources into that and still have them just decide they're not your friends for no reason. So maybe it's not worth spending the influence that way. We just use it to. Well, I was about to say, just use it to buy stuff from the spacers, but I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Is this a public compliment? Okay. Well, we might be able to get him into a defensive pact. Roto has engaged this colony. Well, we probably should do this manually. Again, even if we even if we can't hold this, and it Woodrill has almost no value to us, except as a way of frustrating him. Uh, we should do as much damage as possible. So we have a pretty different militia here. What does he have? Two transcendents on this side, another one on this side. He has one of these monitors that turn out not to actually be worth their cost. A mind control guy that we do have to worry a little bit about. So I think we care a little bit more about this front. Move our hidden over to here. Get ready to snapshot some dudes. Uh, we have our own transcendent and our own engulfer. 
feels to me like the smart move is transfer pain on the engulfer. Try my best to stay swarm shielded. I don't really want to move forward any further than that, and then. These things don't give the swarm shield, do they? No, they're not. Even though they do appear to maybe maybe be biological, they're not not quite the right kind of unit. Actually, I guess I have it right here. Here we go. One big swarm shielded mass. Okay, interesting pain transfers. I mean, actually, I guess they didn't really have that many options. Nope, trying to select that guy. There we go. We got a tiny, tiny amount of turret damage. I mean, he's definitely not benefiting from the cover, right? He's, <laughs> he's three times the size of it. I'm probably better off just overwatching. Like actually hitting that guy while he's in defense mode doesn't really help us. This thing has a five tile range. I, I want to be forward enough that I am a threat in melee, but not so forward that I am easily shootable. I think we're going to keep these two together for the purpose of the swarm shield. Uh, you just need to kind of hang out central. Stay here for the swarm shield, and then you probably don't really want to make your move yet. So that guy has the same seven range that you have, right? And Caustic Smoke has an even shorter range. Uh, this does get the air-to-air -air bonus, so we have to watch the, the location of their guy. But yeah, honestly, I think we just mo we mostly just passed the turn here. I don't think it's worth doing anything else. Uh, we could drop a thing on Roto just to mess with all of these dudes. Like Firestorm here for the stagger and the, the fire damage. Strip a whole a whole bunch of actions out of their team. And start start doing damage to the uh, to the guys back there, so that they're compelled to use their heal. Boy, that Overwatch did literally nothing. I think I just missed a guy running in a straight line and open uh, a total lack of cover. Alright. So we gotta kill this thing. But in order to kill this thing, we have to kill this thing. Like, move all the way up to here. There's the potential of a crash down, I suppose, but I don't, I don't think it's realistic to think we're gonna kill this guy this turn. Uh, so we run up to here and, like, just do a, do a spit right there. Okay, good crit. Have to move out of the caustic smoke. It's not where I was trying to click. I guess I'm probably I'm I'm better off shooting this guy three times than I am running over to range and shooting that guy once. Neither one of them are great, obviously. Eh, two hits, it's not so bad. How much health does he have left? 29, so just enough for me not to be able to kill him with a single uh, single shot here. This would be pretty good. Okay, so now we can cap him with laser strike or something. Yeah, he has too much health for the other thing. 
Well, we can cap him with Laser Strike. And then I can go air to air against this guy. Sadly, no crits. He's just out of range for me to hit him with Sky Melee, but should be able to get into range for, um... Is he really one tile? Oh, I don't have it selected, so it's not showing me the indicator. There we go. I was going to say, is he really one tile out of range for me to get him with the double? That's incredibly annoying. Uh, well... Only three tiles, so... If I ran all the way out in the open, I think I could kill him. That really sucks. It's definitely not worth trying to melee these dudes. But also, if I just stay back here... Not really contributing anything... I'm really surprised that we, we do have the opportunity to kill this guy, though. I underestimated our damage output. I guess I can move up to here and try to draw fire away from the enemies. Like, move to here, go into defense mode with the intent of getting the enemies to shoot at me instead of the turret. There is no line of sight between the uh, the guys shooting the Transcendent and the Transcendent. Like, how is this guy, who is not tall enough to see over this thing, supposed to have shot that guy all the way back there? That doesn't make any sense. What are the odds we could kill Roto? Because if we can kill Roto, all of a sudden, things are a little bit more interesting, right? And they didn't pain transfer him. You don't have any you don't have any action points. Oh, quite the opposite in fact. He has absorb. He is absorbing someone else's pain. I didn't even see whose. Yeah, if we kill Roto, then we could just have the rest of our units rush their capital. Try to burn it down before it uh before he has a chance to respawn in the pod and just end the whole thing right there. Okay, you have melee overwatch, but it's not going to matter. We could shoot some caustic smoke right here. It's like we could we could kill Roto right now with a tactical operation, right? I guess let's just do it. So he's teleported back home to the pod. I don't, I don't know if we have enough, uh, if we if we have enough movement on our units to get to their capital in three turns, but we might be able to pull it off. And even if we can't, he'll respawn there, I believe, and we might be able to do something. We might be able to catch him again. And you see that I'm getting I'm getting a line of sight interruption. I'm getting him being in cover from this line of sight, which makes it completely impossible for him to have shot, have shot at that guy. That's really annoying. I'm going to move a little bit. Yeah, I can get a swarm shield and a little bit more uh, chance to hit. Spread some absorb pain over to somebody else. We may end up in pretty good position here. For, uh, strategically, I, I mean. Please do lots of damage to it. Yeah, we can, we can kill that. In fact, oh man, really? Pretty surprised by how bad his uh, his damage is against it. Well, hard to beat that air to air bonus. Okay, we <laughs> we unnetworked them, which is whatever. 
an okay time for a crit. Do we want to do anything fancy here? Probably not going to be able to kill that guy. I think they did spend some of their... Um, uh, some of their heals. He resisted the burn, which is unfortunate, but he's low enough that we could... If we can get any damage on him at all next turn, we could just laser strike him again. Oh, then the nanite thing is healing him, of course. I forgot to calculate that in. The pushback is actually probably bad for them. Without the without the pushback, they would have had melee overwatch on this guy. My turrets are not good at their job. All right, I think the only useful thing we can still do this battle is try to get lucky here. Show me the crit. Okay, even a normal hit wouldn't have been good enough. And then we just um, surrender. Certainly not going to spend any more energy. Killing Roto is a big deal, though. Provided we can make use of it. And remember, all this stuff is secondary to us winning the game. Roto and Corvin signed a non-aggression pact. There's some deep cowardice there. All right, well, that's probably where we should leave this for today. So Woodrill is now in that state where it's it's mine, and he has to play hard defense if he wants to keep it. We are way too far away. I mean, there's road networks pretty much the entire way. Where does this go? That's a shame. That's not closer to their capital. And they've built up a comical number of units. So it seems like it's going to be probably... It's probably not going to be the case that we can wipe them out. On on account of them playing Roto poorly. We're just too far away, unfortunately. Oh, well. That's going to have to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time, Monday, to see if we can indeed capitalize on Ro Roto's foolishness. And, of course, to watch the world slowly sink beneath a wave of flame. And we'll see you then.